Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to the Speed Chess Championship 2020, this time Super Final. So we have Maxim Vasil Graf and Hikaru Nakamura, who won against Wesley So and Maxim Vasil Graf beat Magnus Carlsen. So this is why we have this Grand Final. And I choose for you one of the games where Hikaru Nakamura is going to play with the white pieces and Maxim Vasil Graf with black. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. We have knight f3, so Zuckertort opening, an uh, invitation for Sicilian, c5, and now we have a little bit unorthodox uh, continuation, however everything will end in the very, very typical structure, which actually can happen uh, by many ways of playing many openings, so for example, even if in Queen's um, Gambit declined. So uh, we have knight f6, bishop b2, we have e6, we have e3, we have bishop e7, and now d4 striking in the center, b6 supporting the pawn, and now bishop d3. Uh, we have bishop b7, we have the castle, we have d5, and now knight b to d2. We have knight b to d7, and finally we have c4. We also have the castle, and now queen e2. And the game was interesting for me, uh, because very often I played, especially in the, in the bullet and blitz time control, it's a very, very solid, and there are a couple of tricks, um, you know, when you play with this pawn center. Uh, so, for example, if you watch my uh, video where Jan Krzysztof Duda play against Magnus Karls, uh, then Magnus played uh, sacrifice one of the pawns, but they got very, very promising, dangerous position. So that was a first very interesting uh, way of playing, but Magnus came with the knight on the e2. So that was a slightly different idea. Uh, here he, we also have a couple of tricks. So first we have uh, c takes on d4, we have knight takes on d4, and now as the pawn didn't take on d4, uh, the knight can jump to the very active uh, c5 square attacking the bishop we have bishop c2 and now d takes on c4 uh, we have knight c4 so very nice centralized uh, knights by hikaru nakamura and now queen d5 threatening already the checkmate it can be you know uh, sometimes very tricky especially when you play a bullet game but this is the beginning of the game and if somebody uh, make pre moves then probably not this caliber we have f3 rook f to d8 and now we have rook f to d1 uh, we have queen h5 now pinning this pawn um, so now white have to be extremely careful here we have b4 now kicking the knight so knight c to d7 going to the much less active position and now a3 stabilizing uh, this little pawn chain we have rook a to c8 so very typical we have bishop b3 now bringing the bishop to this uh, very dangerous diagonal and black always have to be aware maybe about you know some sacrifice on e6 so um, have to be just very careful for now of course it's not possible but in the case we have bishop d5 we have rook a to c1 uh, and now we have knight f8 so the knight uh, remaneuvers from the from the c5 uh, and going at the end to the g6 uh, but for now it's a very nice defender of the position for example uh, covering h7 uh, we have e4 now a very solid pawn structure uh, kicking the bishop so bishop go back to b7 and now this is the critical moment of the game what would you play as white it's not very easy to find the plan uh, you probably improve the position of all the pieces you could play something like knight e3 and try to exchange the the rooks uh, you could improve the position of the queen but probably something like queen e3 or queen f2 maybe just to get away uh, from this pin it's not dangerous now but we can imagine uh, that there are some sacrifices also on e4 um, in some variations maybe it could be even uh, dangerous not for now but you know if you have a lot of tactical motives especially in the bullet you have to be always very very careful uh, but Hikaru Nakamura set up some trap so this is 
use the bite bang knight e5 now can you take the knight or not uh if you start to calculate what would happen this is very interesting because if you go for queen e5 you have to be aware of course of a knight f5 and now this bishop is under attack this is the this is the trick and the queen is under attack and of course the bishop is defended so now what black have to play is something like rook d1 and here where everything starts how would you pick up this rook with the white pieces the problem is if you take it it looks like taking with the queen is the less logical because you know it's uh, defend the, the bishop however that would be the best move in the position because now if you take with the rook on d1 uh then the queen can retreat and actually defend the bishop uh so for example white can play something aggressive like bishop e5 if the queen takes then of course we're gonna have this dangerous fork so that's the first thing but black has have the beautiful answer here you can actually try to think what would you play with the with the black pieces here there is only one continuation for black and it's bishop c5 bishop c5 very very strong move because after b takes on c5 uh, we can have queen e5 now uh, and then after knight e7 the point is that after king h8 knight c8 uh, we have queen c5 winning back the material uh, and with the with the check so after king h1 uh, queen c8 and now black stands better with the two knights for the rook so very very tricky so rook d1 is losing for white however black have to find this very uh, fancy move uh, bishop d1 of course your bishop going away from this beautiful diagonal uh, but if you want to play bishop d1 uh, then simply e takes on f5 and now uh, you would like to take the the queen of course but at the end of the day after rook c1 for the queen uh, watch black have the rook and two knights so again black stands better so as you already see uh, it's very difficult to make decision to take with the queen uh, but taking with the queen is the best move in the position because now uh, you cannot take the with the queen this bishop the problem is now knight e7 is coming winning the material winning the uh the bishop and now after king h8 knight c8 winning rook as well so at the end of the day we have both of the sides have the rooks have also the knights have also the bishop but white is up the exchange so white is um is winning here so that was would be not possible rook c1 probably would be better uh but still you know you have to be aware of knight e7 king h8 and now bishop e5 rook d1 with check uh, and now after bishop d1 uh, the material is equal however white have much more active pieces and of course uh pair of bishops can dominate uh, the position so uh, again white would stand slightly better uh, and this is why knight e5 is not really great to take however this this is still very very complicated so uh, but probably mvl just trust uh, hikaru that this can be some trap here and he has to be very careful so what he played is the strongest move in the position first boom rook c1 uh, we have rook c1 and now bishop d6 pinning the knight and this is where hikaru problems started so we have the pin now the best move in the position would be actually sacrifice one pawn and play something like f4 uh, and after exchanging uh, black of course win the pawn and it's much easier to play with extra pawn of course so that was one option but hikaru didn't want to uh, lose the pawn and he tries to complicate the position and he played knight d to c6 but there is one huge problem in this position and mvl spotted that immediately bishop c6 and now this bishop cannot be taken immediately if you take with the rook then you're gonna lose the the knight for free so bishop e5 bishop e5 and at the end a black have one extra piece and winning game uh, if knight c6 you are in troubles very strong 
attack here, so queen h2, if you go to f2, you're gonna get checkmated uh, pretty fast, uh, there is no way actually to escape as the rook controls all of the squares around, uh, so f4, and we're gonna have the checkmate, and if king f1, then you can survive a bit, uh, but still, uh, queen h1, king f2, queen h4, king f1, and now the knight can also join, uh, make some nasty forks, even if you try to actually exchange the queens, it doesn't work, this is one of the lines, I'm not gonna show you all, all of the lines, but this is very attractive, knight g1, uh, now the, the king cannot go to g1, because that's gonna be the checkmate, so king e1, and now black would have very beautiful, boom, bishop b4 with the check, and now all of the squares around are actually covered by the rook, by the knight, so not much can be done here. Uh, queen h1, and of course this is the this is the checkmate. So a very dangerous attack. This is why we have g4 attack on the queen by Hikaru Nakamura at the same time defending h2. So it looks like the knight can actually uh, escape and for example take the bishop uh, back. So that's the plan. However, now we have bishop b5 attacking the queen. So uh, what can be done here is just exchange. Uh, but at the end, uh, we of course gonna have this knight gonna gonna escape and at the end black have one extra piece if you count the pieces we have one extra knight so exchanging uh that would be that would not work this is why we have queen b5 and now MVL has to do something with the queen. He has a couple of options. So queen g5 is one of the options, keeping this pin uh, on the board. Uh, the knight, of course, can come to the to the g6 and attack this knight one more time. Uh, so that was one of the options. But on the board we have queen h6. And now uh, the pin is still on the board because uh, queen h2 is the very very strong threat. And also the queen is watching and the rook on the on the c2. Uh, so if the bishop ever moved, then this rook gonna be under attack. So this is why we have rook e1. And now finally knight g6 attacking and then knight for the second time. But it's defended uh, two times as well. Now what white can play in this position? The material is equal. So white managed to actually get back the, the material. However, the position is very, very difficult. Uh, and now if white try something like bishop c1 for example uh, attacking the queen uh, the queen cannot be catched because there is always some uh, moves like queen h3 still this pin can be maintenance here uh, so for example if this knight ever moved like knight g6 we're gonna have bishop h2 um, king f2 bishop g3 king e3 and now uh, everything what black have to do is just destroy this uh, this pawns around the, the the king so knight g4 sacrifice f takes on g4 and now after bishop h4 still this rook is really a beast uh, controlling all the d file and uh, winning the game so king e2 um, uh, queen g2 king e3 and we would have the, the checkmate. Uh, otherwise f4 could be played but it's still not enough because now this pawn is without the protection. So knight g4 uh, and for example uh, queen e2 uh, trying to defend the position which could be possible uh, but not for the long time because after bishop e5, f takes on e5, uh, the knight from the 6th rank can go to the e5 and now we're gonna have an attack straight on the king white can try to defend bishop d2 but the position of white is completely passive would be extremely difficult to actually find uh, the way to to survive for example queen c3 now this bishop is under attack so uh i'm not sure bishop b2 maybe uh but then uh, finally knight f3 can be played and if the queen takes on the on the f3 there is the problem that queen e1 with the check and uh, as you already see uh, queen f1 now queen e3 uh, now the queen cannot move so probably king g2 but then rook d2 and this is just crashing it's impossible to actually survive that so uh 
bishop c1 doesn't work this is why we have rook e2 trying to defend uh, this pawn but then there is the huge problem because now black can win very easy bishop e5 bishop e5 and now queen g5 pinning this bishop and finally winning and there is no way to actually defend um, that bishop so what can be played uh if you try something like bishop f6 just exchange the problem is queen b5 you're losing the queen uh bishop d8 and then queen e2 uh, so this rook was on e2 so that was not possible of course black is completely winning uh, and if you try something like f4 we're gonna have knight f4 and it's also winning this pawn is under attack as well what you can play is uh, maybe rook f2 uh, but then knight h3 and, and so on king f1 now queen c1 uh, king g2 now a queen g1 and that would be the checkmate on g4 so uh, this is why after queen g5 uh hikaru nakamura just resigned so this was one of the games which was won by maxim vashel lagraf but overall uh hikaru nakamura was a better player uh, he won 18 and a half to 12 uh, and a half so definitely he was dominating uh in the super final and he is the winner of the third edition of the speed chess championship 2020 so that's all the games i wanted to show you from this uh speed chess championship if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other videos on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one